Hi, everybody. In a few short videos, I'm going to go through this PowerPoint that you have access to on Canvas. It covers the fundamental basic camera operations procedures. But by the end of this PowerPoint, you should be able to put your camera on manual mode, set your ISO, your f-stop, and your shutter speed, and create a good exposure. And so that is our goal. You're going to get a lot of information this week, especially because we're covering basic camera operations. And then throughout the next several weeks, we're going to be breaking a lot of this information down and getting more detailed. For right now, it's all about the basic fundamental components of exposure. So the very first one is the aperture or the f-stop. The second one is your shutter speed and the third one is your ISO. Let's start with your aperture. Notice right over here on the left-hand side, going towards the right-hand side, this is a picture of what you, the aperture looks like on the inside of your lens. The aperture is in the inside of your lens, not inside the camera body itself. And the gray area over here represents the leaves, the metal leaves of the aperture. And the aperture kind of works like um, the iris of your, or the pupil of your eye. So when it's really large, this white circle in the middle represents it being open, having a larger opening. This is representative of what's called F number 2.8, okay? The larger the opening is, the more light it allows it. And so as the aperture closes down, as you see depicted here, it gets smaller and smaller, it lets in less light. So very similar to how the pupil of our eyes works. And every time the aperture opens up, getting larger or closes down, getting smaller, there's a number associated with it. And we call that an f-stop. And so the larger openings have actually lower numbers, as you see that that's sort of happening already. And the tinier openings, the smaller the opening gets, the higher the number is. The aperture controls the amount of light allowed in through the lens. The larger the opening, the the more light is allowed in. The smaller the opening, the less light is allowed in. Each smaller opening admits one half the amount of light of the previous larger opening. And now that is something that we're gonna spend a lot of time on. Because that is a concept that it will allow us, if we, under, if we become to understand it, will allow us to understand how exposure equivalents work and how our shutter speed and aperture and ISO are all working together in order to get us a good exposure. So the common F numbers or the common F stops are as follows. They're more than are listed here. And you can also find these F numbers listed in Canvas in module week two. We have F1, F1.4, F2, F2.8, F4, F5.6, F8, F11, F16, F22, and F32. Notice how the numbers, every other one actually doubles. So this is all about, at this point, uh, with this comment, I'm talking about memorization. How do we memorize our common f-stop numbers? One of the ways we can memorize them is by noticing that every other number actually doubles. So f1 doubles to f2, f2 doubles to f4, f4 doubles to f8, f8 to 16, and 16 to 32. And similarly, but not totally perfectly, f1.4 doubles to 2.8, 2.8, doesn't really double to uh, 2.6, or actually it does, but 2. Point, but 5.6 does not double to 11, but 5 plus 6 equals 11. So that's just a little trick to help you to remember it, okay? Um, because that's the one that doesn't quite double. Uh, 11 doubles to 22 though. So there's a little hiccup right there in the middle. Um, but F5.6 is actually really easy to remember because it's one of our major f-stop numbers that we always associate with taking and creating portraits. So that'll be a way that you to help you remember F5.6. 
The F numbers are also called stops. If I say to you that the image is too dark and you need to open up one whole stop, then you need to make your F stop one stop larger from F4 to F5.6 because they are next to each other on the list of common F stops. So let's go back and look at that list of common F stops right down here. If um, one stop is basically one number difference be be on this list of common F stop numbers, and I have additional videos that are available to you in the module week two and module two for week two of this course that goes into more detail about F stops and how to calculate stops and all that kind of information. So you want to go back and watch those videos that are I also have available for you. But F1 is one stop difference from F1.4 and F2 is one stop difference from F1.4. No matter which direction you're going in and to repeat what I say on the next slide, which is let's say you took take a photograph and you're at F8, but your picture is too dark. So my suggestion is open up by one stop. I'm going to say open up to a larger opening. See, notice the openings of the aperture is actually larger from F. 5.6 to F8, 5.6 is larger than F8. So I'm saying open up by one stop to let in more light. And so that is what I am referring to. The aperture also controls something very important called depth of field. This controls how much in your view is in focus. There's also a definition for you on Canvas, how much in front of and behind your point of focus that is actually in focus. So when I say point of focus, I mean where you are literally focused in that photograph. So let's take, for example, these two images here. I'm focused on this guy in the foreground. His name is Tremaine. And I'm focused on him. That's where my focus dot is. And so everything in front of him and behind him is that depth of field. A small aperture opening F22 makes more of the scene from your lens to the horizon sharper. A large aperture opening of F4, as, as an example, makes a smaller portion of the scene in focus, depending on where you point your focus. So here we have an example on the left. The exposure is F4 at this shutter speed of 1 over 500 at this ISO of 400. And we'll talk about those two things in just a moment. Right now we're focused on depth of field. At F4, I'm focused on him in the foreground. That's where my actual focusing dot is. But the background is becoming much more indistinct. Uh, the person in the background, Cassie, and the signs in the background, I can't even really read those letters. It's, it's soft, it's indistinct. But let's look at this exposure at F22. When I make my F-stop go higher to a higher number, which is a tinier opening, it actually makes everything sharper from the foreground all the way to the background. So that is a quick overview of depth of field and your f-stop.